All right, I'm going to show how to bed this action into the stock. Uh, this is an old stock that I picked up off of eBay. Um, somebody bedded it with some type of uh, epoxy with metal in it. I'm not sure even what they use. It's probably this stock is probably from the 60s or so. It was an old prone stock. So I'm going to take it and uh, kind of clean out that old bedding and drop this action in there and. They didn't really do the greatest job. They kind of got lazy and just made a recess here and went all the way back. But I'll uh, cut it out best I can and fit it best I can. And and it looks like it should be okay. This was originally for a, a pattern 14 Enfield, and this is a, a model 1917. So it should they're almost the same. They're close enough to where this will work. So I'll cut it out and get going on it and see what happens. So I'll just do some general cutting on this because it's kind of boring. I'll just cut a little bit and then kind of go to the next thing. Um, this stock is a blind floor plate. There's no trigger guard. Well, there's a, a trigger guard, but there's no floor plate on it. So um, <coughs> this will get bedded all the way from now about half inch to an inch um, in front of the receiver under the barrel all the way to the back so um, so I'll just get going on it here start boring out material and see where we get and when I do this I always got a vacuum running so just to keep things tidy and neat Alrighty, I got this thing kind of cut in. I'll take a look here if I can get out of light. So it's kind of where I want it to be, but not really. Um, I'm probably going to take it down another eighth of an inch or so. Uh, whoever did this stock before, right? Like I said, I don't like the way they did it. This is not the way I do it, but. Um, I got the stock for cheap and it's a it's actually kind of a nice stock but anyways making making stuff work here again uh, I think after this I'm just gonna go back to buying new stocks like I normally do because <laughs> this is a pain in the ass um, but anyways maybe it'll help somebody out um, so I'll have to when I bed this thing off to do it like if you guys watch any of my other videos I I fixed a, a bad inletting job and this is kind of what this is going to end up being back here because uh, they cut out so much material back here that it was just full of, you can kind of see it right there, it was just full of bedding back here and uh, so it's going to, I'm going to have to get some acro glass in there and fill that in and at least make it match the color of the stock but I'm gonna try and drop this down a little further because I don't like this this little lip right here. I like this the top of this to be flush with the top of the wood. And if they wouldn't have cut for some reason they cut this down right here. If they wouldn't have cut that down it would have been fine, but uh, usually with mine I'll cut it out for the bolt stop and then it'll come back up just a little tiny bit um, around the back side of the bolt stop and then it'll flush out all the way back around and everything so um, so I got it kind of in there and I usually kind of like to get my my barrels about halfway and uh, it's about halfway in the front I could go down and yeah, there we go if I'm about right there I'd be happy with that but once I lift my stock up it messes everything up so I'll keep whittling away at it and hopefully get it looking good again here but that's the crappy part if you decide to inlet or bed your own stock and inlet it they take forever it's kind of a tedious process and it can get frustrating but if you take your time and 
test fit and then refit and test fit and cut and te test fit and recut and um, sooner or later uh, if you take your time it'll, it'll end up fitting good and it'll look nice uh, and if you bed it properly and you don't take out too much wood when you bed it <clears throat> you shouldn't be able to see any bedding compound at all so it should just be wood up tight against the metal <clears throat> so there you go I'll keep whittling away at this and hopefully I'll get it down to where I want it and then we can bed it it's ready to go uh, it's set up to where I want it and what I gotta do now is uh, put a bunch of release agent on all the stuff I need um, I hadn't ordered a set of screws yet uh, so I got a back, a rear tang screw and then the front action screw. I just got these space, well, this is what's going to go on the stock and then I got these two nuts for a spacer. So, <clears throat> sorry, it's not in the picture there, but, um, so this will work just to get me so I can get it bedded and then I got some other, a shorter screw on order or if I get ambitious I might make one because I got the stuff to make them. But, um, so anyways, the stuff I use is just, um, clear shoe polish, uh, you can get it wherever, and the easiest way to do these, these screws, I do the whole screw, um, sorry, I get, get all, get everything in there, and work it all throughout there, and I even get the head, and I get that in there because, um, if you pack it in there, you know, if for some reason you get bedding compound in there, you can get it out of there after you pack this stuff in there. And then, you're, you know, it's not going to matter if your screwdriver, you know, that'll get in there. So, um, this thing, I'll do this because I'm not sure I want to leave it in there. Because I'm probably going to make a new one. So I'll just bed it to right underneath there, so... I'll get that thing good. Um, and Q-tips work really well for getting getting inside a because you want to cover everything. So and then make sure you don't have big gobs of it left over on there, unless you know on the inside it ain't a big deal. But you don't want to you know that'll leave a void if you do that. So and this one. So this is this is kind of the one of the most important parts. Well, one of the most important parts when you're actually doing it. I mean, setting it up and getting it set up the way you want it is pretty important, and then making sure all your clearances are good. And, but um, you know, if everything gets stuck in there, you can't get it out. It's kind of pointless to to be doing this unless you want to leave it in there forever. So here's my trigger guard. I, I'm, I might replace this one too, but for now, it's gonna it's gonna do this is an original original one that somebody cut the whole floor plate off so uh, it's not the prettiest thing in the world but it'll it'll work so I'm just kinda getting this thing together now so I can shoot it it still needs final finishing and everything on it sorry I'm kinda out of the picture there so these things make sure you get them in the screw holes good you know, better to be a little more generous than kind of stingy because the shoe polish is cheap and it's a it's a pain to get this stuff out, get these screws or even these trigger guards and stuff off if you don't put enough release compound on there. And this isn't going to get bedded. I'm just doing the back where the screw is going to be in here because I drilled out where that rear tank screw is going to go so I'll have bedding compound going all the way up and down that thing so so I got the bottom stuff done here now I'll grab my barrel of action and what I usually do with these is just a little piece of towel or even a paper towel works to just get a bunch of stuff on there and go to town go up I usually go up, you know, I usually, it only goes up to about here, but, you know, in case sometimes you got to wipe some extra off. And then I always do the first inch or so under the chamber. 
so <clears throat> with this rag I'm just kind of getting the getting the big areas I guess one thing I should probably stop and do now is before I get too far in the back end here is you got to fill some of these holes in because if you get too much going on in there <clears throat> or too much you know if you get overflow in here you're going to be not happy and things aren't going to work out the way you want them to so with this particular action I just fill in this whole trigger recess here because none of that needs to be bedded I full length bed all my actions just seems to work out better and under here you don't have to be like stingy with this either but I try and get it because you're gonna have a trigger and stuff you know your trigger is gonna be in here so you're gonna have to <coughs> bore this material out anyways after you get it in there or machine it out or whatever um, if some people if you have a uh, can't think right now if you have a uh, milling machine but most people probably doing that this at, this at home will probably be using like a a Dremel or something the universal gunsmithing tool it seems like sometimes you know, some people love them some people hate them but they're kinda unnecessary evil sometimes so and then there's a trigger pin here so I'm just gonna blob a bunch on there and then I took a bunch of the safety block and stuff off of here um, and I don't think I'm gonna well I might put a little you know your action if you're doing like a Remington 700 or or a Winchester Model 70 or something or whatever a Savage or whatever you know you're gonna have different spots than what I got going on here so so just kind of fill in any hole that you think might get in the way or might potentially get epoxy in it because it's a it's a lot easier to fill them in than it is to bore them out it's just a pain in the ass so and then some of these spots when they get a little higher you don't have to worry about them like this this is a little vent hole for the for in case you get a case eruption or a case you know failure it's a gas vent so I'm gonna fill that in my stock line is just right below here so but the only reason I'm doing that is because like I said when it squishes out and you you know clean it off it could get in there so then I got a little hole here so what I'm using here is plumber's putty some people use uh, Play, but I think plumber's putty works fantastic for me so anyways I've got all those plugged now now is the time to that I get in here with all all these little corners and edges and everything and and make sure you got this shoe polish or whatever type of release agent you're using and in this case you know the more the merrier you don't like it said you just don't want big blobs of it but you want enough on there to where you're not gonna have to worry about when you go to pull it out that it's stuck just make sure you get everywhere and it's always good to go over it probably two three times just to make sure just in case because you never know alrighty so I got <coughs> everything set up ready to go I got uh, what I'm using here is uh, Devcon 10 110 um, putty it's what, what I normally use so <sighs> this is pretty straightforward I guess it's not real rocket science um, what I'm going to do is kind of fill in and I don't have this usually you tape these off but I'm gonna refinish this one again um, I, I I've done another one like this but um, this isn't, uh, you know, finished, well, it's finished, but it's, like I said, I'm going to refinish it, so, um, if I get a little on the side, that's not a big deal, although I usually keep it pretty clean, so, so, and 
This DevCon, they say, makes it 2.5 to 1 by weight, or sorry, by volume. And I think it's 9 by one, nine to 1 by weight. So, I don't really do that. <laughs> well, I mean I do, but I just kind of eyeball it. And then I kind of make sure I've done this enough that I kind of make sure that I have enough to do it. And I, when I usually get done, I'm usually pretty close on how much I should have had. So, you just want to make sure you get enough in everywhere and like I don't know if you can see this here I'm going under the recoil not on the recoil lug under the chamber area um, and then I'll come back and machine that out flat so or straight across so I got a consistent uh, consistent uh, width across the barrel Make sure you get the recoil lug in there good. I usually try and fill it in there pretty good. And then once you, as long, if you get it in there, try not to get any air bubbles in there because you'll get air pockets. And that's an old good. And then when you're doing this, it's always better to put a little extra in because you don't, it's no fun to go back and fill an air pocket I'm getting kind of down towards the bottom of my what I got left here so I'm gonna be pretty close and then I, of course you know when you squish your action there you're gonna have a bunch of squeeze out so and then when I flip this thing over I'm gonna try and get some save a little bit so I can get some in the screw holes on the bottom side because I want to kind of pillar bed it with this epoxy because I, I don't know I don't see the benefit to going through all the work to putting aluminum pillars or whatever in there when you can do this and it does essentially well it does the same thing so I don't think you're really gaining anything out of spending the money and taking the time to do aluminum pillars. But if it makes you sleep better at night, you can do that too. So all I'm doing now is just kind of spreading it out and making sure I'm trying to get as much in there as possible so when I squeeze it in there, it won't, uh, I won't have a bunch of squeeze out. It's, you know, you're going to have some no matter what you do, but you try and control it the best you can. So yeah, most of this is gonna squeeze out, but <clears throat> I guess the benefit to doing it this way, you know, when you have a bunch of squeeze out is then you know you're gonna have a good end product and you're not gonna have a bunch of voids in there. The voids suck. Now that I got that all done on the top, I'm gonna you can kind of see it there. I'm going to flip this over and I got some squeeze out there. That's good. But what I want to do is get some down in there. So I got my nifty little tool here. Because my screw is going to go in from this side, obviously. So I'm just going to try and get as much in there as I can because it'll all squish out the 